We're here at the Breast Screen Clinic in Jeringhap Street in Geelong where they're celebrating their first birthday and they've got speakers from the medical field and all of the guests here today are finding out more about the services that are available. The celebrations this morning are about trying to inform the public about what the clinic offers, about the services that we offer here. What, what we're really trying to get across is that women can come to this facility have a problem and go back to their doctor with an answer rather than um, have to go backwards and forwards for a whole lot of different examinations. Anybody who has any symptoms at any stage, we really want anybody to be, any ladies to be really familiar with your breasts and if you, any changes happen to go off to your doctor straight away and he'll send you to a clinic like this where um, you walk in, any procedure that you need done gets done and you go back to your doctor with your diagnosis. And we're joined this morning with the Geelong Juggernauts, Dragons Abreast Geelong, and the President, Diane Carrington, and the Assistant Coach, Fran Forsyth. Now, ladies, can you tell us a little bit about what the Juggernauts do? Well, um, Geelong Juggernauts, we are a basically and primarily a dragon boat team for breast cancer survivors and their supporters. Um, it, it's an Australia, uh, worldwide sport. We compete um, in uh, Melbourne, country Victoria, interstate Australia, and uh, we compete overseas as well. We are living proof that you don't have to be sick and miserable with a breast cancer di uh, diagnosis. I have, this is one of the best things I have ever done in my life, being part of Geelong Juggernauts and it is just, it's like being reborn again. I have never had so much fun or felt the love of other people around me and we are not just a sporting club, we are a holistic club, we look after our members. And what does this morning mean to you, Fran? Well, without breast screening, I would not have been picked up. My breast cancer was picked up through breast screening six years ago. And since then, uh, I almost, I found uh, the poster about dragons of breast in Greg Mitchell's um, surgery. And I immediately rang them and contacted them because to me, that was what I wanted to do. I wasn't going to sit and be miserable for the rest of my life. So for the last six years, I've been paddling in a breast cancer dragon boat. Also, I paddle in another team in Melbourne, um, just to extend my <laughs> life. <laughs> but we have had an absolute wonderful time together. The, the girls are all a family, and we all thoroughly enjoy each other's company. <laughs> Meryl Friend at Breast Screen for News Geelong. Andrew Katos has proposed a grant for the Spring Creek Reserve football ovals redevelopment if re-elected in the November term, as Ian Nichols reports. This is the Torquay football ground, better known in this location as Spring Creek Reserve. It's the home of the Torquay Tigers. Very ambitious football team. They held the grand final here and they will for the next two or three seasons to our knowledge. But more importantly, these club rooms you see here need an overhaul. And in that respect, the political parties have not been slow in coming forward. The Nationals, in the state Liberal campaign this year, have offered $200,000 towards a makeover, including lighting at the ground. Because it's not all that long ago that Torquay also expressed interest in holding a VFL game here, possibly as early as 2012. We spoke today with Dennis Ryan, the promotions and sponsorship manager for the club and Andrew Katos, the Liberal candidate for South Barwon. The Coalition have kindly uh, put in their, their kick and, and given us $200,000 if elected towards the uh, building upgrade and extensions here at Spring Creek which as you know are badly needed for this growing community. And Andrew, you have uh, already sponsorship signs at the Oval. You obviously have a, a close affinity with Torquay and you'd like to see that grow and uh, nurture more. Well, I, I remember Torquay. My godparents actually used to have the fish and chip shop in Bell Street for years, many years ago. And I remember coming down here as a boy in the 70s and Torquay was actually a, a little sleepy village. It isn't anymore. It's... Uh, in the last 10 years it's doubled in size, it's almost 15,000 people living here and the community infrastructure has been left behind and that's why we're investing $200,000 if we're elected in November 
to invest back into the community and cater for the growth of this community. Well, Andrew, I know that uh, your leader, Ted Bailey, very happy to be giving at this time to uh, obviously cull votes, of course, but it's not, it's not just about gaining votes, it's about becoming part and parcel of this community. Well, that's right, Andrew. Look, I, I understand how the community works here. I've got four children. I've got a, a seven-year-old, three to a six-month-old, four boys, so for every football club that's out there, I'll have some uh, a bit later on down the track. But that's what I want to see them. I want to see them go into a, a club that's got a, a good family environment, that teaches respect, teaches discipline, and we need to nurture clubs like the Torquay Tigers here to be able to, to have our community grow and prosper. And the council, Dennis, they've been very supportive so far in the plans that you've had for particularly the lighting and bringing this ground up to uh, a possible VFL standard by 2012? Well, Ian, I, with the way you said so far and the emphasis on it, I was taken aback. Of course the council have been helpful and they continue to be very helpful. They're, they're really committed to this project. They know that the ground here at Spring Creek is, is a jewel in their crown and, and they're very proud of it like us. They're, they're, they're proud of bringing it forward into the future and they are very much on side with this project, that's for sure. At the home of the Torquay Tigers, this is Ian Nichols for News Geelong. Thanks, Ian. This week is Mental Health Week in Geelong. It is a week where community organisations are celebrating the facilities that we have here, as well as those with mental illness are trying to increase awareness. Steph Cowdery was at City Hall for the opening of Mental Health Week in Geelong. I'm here at City Hall for the launch of Mental Health Week. And tonight we're recognising the achievements of individuals and organisations working in the mental health field. This is an area of, of care which often doesn't get the recognition it, it requires. The people who work in it don't get the recognition. So an opportunity to debunk some of the myths, celebrate success and so many people here tonight, it's just a fantastic thing. So it's a great thing. Now I feel quite close to it and I think it's something which is uh, really important that we understand that mental health is is as much a health problem as it is a society problem and one of the things we need to get across here is that there are things we can all do as a community, as a carer and even our understanding of our preparedness to accept diversity within our community is really important. Okay James, how long has the road for recovery been and have you still got further to go? Uh, it's been since October 2006. Um, that's when I started my recovery and uh, it's been ongoing since then. I do consider myself as recovered, uh, but not completely recovered yet. So I'm planning to completely recover in the next year or so. And do you think writing your book, Eight Stones, has helped your recovery at all? Yeah, it definitely has. It's been very therapeutic to get uh, it all out of my head and onto paper. Um, often we can stumble with things in our mind, so yeah, it's been a very cathartic process. Having a uh, close family, partner, friends, all that kind of stuff is uh, one of the first steps to my recovery. Uh, I think the important thing is um, if you're feeling that something is not quite right, um, just to talk to somebody, whether that be a family member, a friend, uh, just a loved one, or even your GP. Uh, it's a perfect place to go. Look, communication's the way, you know, communication's the way to, uh, to help all these things, like talk to your kids, talk to your parents, talk to your friends. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a program that's run here in Geelong which is called Are You OK? And there's no doubt that uh, you can ask them, are you OK? But the reality to it is it's all right to say, no, I'm not, I do need help. So, uh, you know, it's just about communication and, um, you know, and if you uh, do know someone that is struggling, don't be frightened to talk to them because uh, they may be frightened to talk to you. So uh, communication is what it's all about. And do you think Geelong has now become a leader in pushing awareness for mental health? No doubt about that. Geelong is certainly one of the leaders pushing awareness for mental health. Uh, and uh, rightly so. We've had a number of issues uh, uh, with um, a, a number of mental health problems over the years. So, uh, you know, there's the people that have gone before us that are be, uh, to be congratulated for... Uh, for uh, you know, taking it on board and, um, and, and starting these programs which we continue today. So yeah, we certainly are a leader in that area. Stephanie Cowdery at City Hall for Mental Health Week launch, News Geelong.